So in this particular problem, they're not giving me the z-score and asking for the area. They're giving me the area and asking me for the z-score. Now using StatCrunch, this is really straightforward. So when I pull up StatCrunch, I will open up my standard normal calculator. So I will hit Stat, go to Calculator, and choose Normal. So they're wanting the z-score where the area is 0 0.4090 to the left. So 0 0.4090 is my probability. So I'm going to come over here and do 0 0.4090. Now remember, they are asking for a z-score. So the mean needs to be 0, the standard deviation needs to be 1. So here's my area under the curve, and what I'm looking for is the z-score to the left. And then there is that z-score, negative 0 0.2301, if we round. Well, this asks for two decimal places, so there's the negative 0.23. Now this problem asks for the area to the right, and what is that z-score? And again, I would just choose the greater than here. And I would want to make sure mean and standard deviation are 0 and 1. So I would delete this value. I would type the area in here. So the area they gave me was 0 0.0294. So 0 0.0294. This is blank. I wanted greater than in that problem. And there's that z-score. Now here's a problem where they rephrase it a little bit different. They say find the z-score that 33% is to the left. So with my standard normal calculator, I want this blank, and I want 33%, and then obviously 33% as a decimal is 0.33, and it wanted to the left. So there's the z-score that corresponds to 33% to the left. So let's take a look at how this reverse lookup applies to a word problem. So here is a word problem that says the per capita energy consumption level in kilowatt hours in a certain country for a recent year can be approximated by a normal distribution as shown in the graph to the right. So we're asked for three different uh, percentiles and a quartile in the last one. So part A says find the consumption level that represents the fifth percentile. And keep in mind what this means is that I want the value so that 5% of all of the data lies below this number. Now remember, we are looking for this number. So in essence, we're wanting to find the z-score Let's say the z-score is right here, so that 5% is to the left. So the area is 5%, or 0.05 would be my area. That would be the fifth percentile. Now this one is not really asking for a z-score. It's asking for the exact x value within this data set. So when I bring up my standard normal calculator, excuse me, I want to know the mean and the standard deviation. So they tell me the mean and the standard deviation here. So I'm going to want to bring up my normal calculator and type in that mean and standard deviation. All right, so I've put in that mean and that standard deviation. And the problem is asking, right, what is the consumption level? What is the data mark for the consumption level to be the fifth percentile? So again, I want 0.05 area to the left because that's what a percentile represents. So I'm going to have to the left over here, and I'm going to say 0.05 and compute. And there's the 1329 data mark within this data set that would correspond to the fifth percentile. So when we pull that problem back up, we can see there's that value. Letter B says what's the consumption level that it's the 17th percentile. Again, I would just change this to 0.17, and the percentile is always how much is to the left, and there is that value. And then the last problem references the third quartile. So again, this is third quartile is 75% below uh, the data mark. So again, I'll just bring up my calculator, change this to 75%, and to the left, of course, and there is that data mark. 
All right, let's take a look at one last problem in this section. It's going to involve a reverse lookup, and uh, it's worded a little bit different. So in this problem, it says that a vending machine dispenses coffee into a 16-ounce cup. The amount of coffee dispensed into the cup is normally distributed with a standard deviation of 0.06 ounces. And when we talk about uh, mechanical processes, machines doing things, they don't do everything exactly the same. There's going to be slight variation. So we might get 16.1 ounces in one cup. We might get 15.9 ounces in another cup. We're going to have some slight variation. So this problem is saying you can allow the cup to overfill 10% of the time. Right? So maybe that was determined by the uh, cost-benefit analysis, right? So if we're throwing away 10% of our cups, we're still making money, let's say, right? So we've, we're told we're okay with 10% of the cups overfilling. So what amount should we set as the mean so that the variation allows for at most 10%? <coughs> Excuse me. All right, so just like all of our uh, reverse lookup problems, what we're wanting to do is find the mean so that we have 6% in the right tail, 6% of overflow. So we, in essence, want 94% of the cups to fill properly, and we're okay with 6%, uh, I think this was 10% in this problem. We're okay with 10% of overfill uh, in this scenario. All right, now here's the standard normal curve where we're looking at z-scores and what we really want to know is what is the mean of the actual data set where the standard deviation of that data set is 0.06. So the first thing we need to do is find the z-score that corresponds to, not that number, find the z-score that corresponds to 10% to the right as overfill. So if I bring up my standard normal calculator in StatCrunch, I'm looking for 10% in the right corner greater than, and I click Compute, and there's that z-score of 1.28. So this problem is asking for what is the mean. So what we're going to do in this case is use the z-score formula. And remember, kind of in words, the z-score formula is we're going to take the data value minus the mean divide by the standard deviation. So in symbols, we have this as our formula. So I know the z-score that will correspond to the 10%. I know the x value is 16. So remember in our verbiage of our problem, we have a 16 ounce cup here. So that is my x value. I'm looking for the mean. That was what the problem asked for. What is the mean so that 10% of overfill is acceptable? So we plug in the values that we have, and then we're just going to do a little bit of algebra here and solve for the mean mu. So I'm going to multiply 0.06 to the other side and I get this. And then I'm going to go ahead and add the mu to the other side. So that's what I did here. And then I'm going to subtract this number to the right. So mu would be 16 minus the z times sigma and we get 15.9, actually that's 2, I had a typo. We get 15.92 when we calculate um, that value for mu. So 15, I'm going to the wrong thing, 15.92 would what we be, we would want to set the mean to. So again, visually, we want to set the mean here to 15.92, so that with a standard deviation of 0.06, we're going to get only 10% overfill. And so if this is 15.92 here, right, then we will achieve that mark. Okay, so this is everything that I wanted to go over using the standard normal.